RTJ, let's do it. Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and today we are discussing Run the Jewels 4. This is the fourth installment in the eponymous RTJ series. The last we heard from Killer Mike and LP was back in 2018 with the Venom soundtrack single, Let's Go, The Royal We. It was all right, but you could tell it wasn't nearly as lyrically potent or as hard hitting as the RTJ series. 2016 was the last time we got one of those albums albums with RTJ3 might have been their most politically charged at the time, and it was only fitting to have it drop after Donald Trump's election. Now what we have on our hands might be even more politically charged, as it might be their most accessible album now too. And it's no shock that we have Mike and Jamie blessing us with their topical and conscious raps yet again. They always are in tune with the most relevant news. And without much worry for official album release dates, this was Rush released two days before June 5th, and yeah, this album is being put out in a time of need, chaos, and horrific racial injustice in America. I mean, we're just talking only a week after the death of George Floyd. Now, I don't normally factor in a great deal of political or social context with my album reviews, but this is unavoidable. And you'll recognize that when I talk about the lyrics a bit later on, but for now, I want to give a bit more of the musical background for RTJ because I have a bit of an interesting history with them, um, or at least my understanding of who the members were before their uh, creative powers were fused and united. So personally, I didn't get into RTJ's music until around 2016, but unknowingly, I previously heard one of these members elsewhere. It was LP. Uh, at the turn of the 2000s, actually, um, I was very young, but he was behind the board producing for New York's very own Cannibal Ox. This is a hip-hop duo that had a song featured on the video game Tony Hawk's Underground, and I played that many times in my childhood. Anyways, interesting side story, but New York also has a tie to LP when it comes to the title of the first track on this new RTJ album, Yankee and the Brave. Obvious little baseball references to represent the hometowns of the RTJ members, LP being a Yankee and Killer Mike being from Atlanta cheering for the Braves. Now fully diving into the track list, Yankee and the Brave was one of the first singles I heard before this album dropped, and it still has one of the best hip-hop instrumentals that I've heard all this year. It's almost like a bank alarm went off and Mike and Jamie are just making a run for it as they do. It's a stick up, run the jewels. Another single to drop pre-release was Ooh La La and this features Greg Nice and DJ Premier. Of course this has a gang star sample and I don't know if the piano is pitch shifted or warped but it's certainly altered and trippy and I love that. It is always a great sign to see a hip-hop record using samples and tweaking them to give them a different spin, enhancing the quality, modernizing them a bit too. I also feel like samples are a fine art, like it takes serious talent to not only select them, to curate them, but also to just fuse a, a bunch of different genres that you wouldn't necessarily associate with hip hop too. I mean, if a horror and ghost main song can be sampled on the track Walking in the Snow on this album, that's next level. Not only this, but post-punk's Gang of Four are called upon for the main beat in the song The Ground Below. What? Stuff like this in hip-hop always blows my mind because I have my doubts coming into it and I'm totally caught off guard and amused when I look up samples of the songs that are used afterwards during my research. Now, in my opinion, the hip-hop record is also elevated to excellence when you have features dropping fire, heat, whatever you call it. Obviously, you don't want anyone to overshadow or show up the main artists on a record, but something to complement the project's mission, goals, and statements. And boy, RTJ, they assembled a dynamite cast from 2 Chains to Mavis Staples. Let's first talk about 2 Chains because that is a bit of a weird pick for Jamie and Mike to have on their album, but on his track, Out of Sight, 2 Chains might have come through with some of his best bars that uh, we've heard from him since his contributions to content Kanye's Mercy. Come on, that hot dog line, that's genius. Sheer genius. Moving on from there, hip hop and R&B collide on the cut just. We have Pharrell and Zach De La Roca who are calling out the hypocrisy of abolishing slavery, yet we all glorify slave masters on American currency. Of course, you might know I have a love-hate relationship with Pharrell, but he sticks to the hook here. And yeah, the hook is sticky. It's catchy. And it's funny because I checked out some of the Neptune's music and the bouncy instrumental on 
here is similar to like what would be used on one of their songs, but Pharrell, he doesn't really do any of the production, so I'm happy with that. He sticks to his guns. Not only does the song just see a fusion of hip hop and R&B, we also have a frequent collaborator along for the ride, Zach De La Roca. He delivers on the front of being like rap rock, uh, kind of late 90s, early 2000s kind of sound with that, and I do like it. Now, if we were to complete like a holy trinity of how RTJ went off and pretty much killed the game with this album, we're adding to not only one, the incredible samples, two, the tight feature list, but now three, we have lyrics that uh, obliterate social and racial shortcomings. Of course, I already mentioned the track just, but the spotlight has to go on without a doubt, the cut Walking in the Snow. This track throws bar after bar of cold, savage, and frankly, just lyrics that we need to hear right now. We need to reflect, we need to assess, we need to reassess and think over what we do in our life and how we treat others. From Killer Mike's second verse to the exchanged third verse with LP, countless conscious and aware lines are just all over this track. And both guys, it sounds like they were on freaking Adderall to stay this hyper-focused. Look at these bars. Like, this song is a protest in itself and could quite literally soundtrack one. After all, the punk and hip-hop scenes were founded on philosophies like this. This is fantastic. Lastly, the final track I want to draw focus towards here is the closer, a few words for the firing squad, Radiation. And with this, I haven't quite heard a hip-hop track that not only sonically plays like a finale, but also constantly runs the pulse of production so skillfully. We have a phenomenal sax solo, and we are reminded that we shouldn't bet against RTJ, and I think I'd be out of my mind if, if I bet against them, frankly. In summary for RTJ4, however, I don't think I can say enough good things about this. Uh, only one song I have minor critiques with, it would be Never Look Back. Just a little underwhelming with its hook, it also derailed the momentum that this track list had going for it, but still, I'm reeled in with the lyrical lessons of time. I thought those were pretty cool. The positives, they definitely outweigh anything I just said because this album, it is free-flowing. It is a soundtrack for a revolution. It is hard-hitting with its production. Thanks to LP, we have solid features. And the record itself, what makes it even more impressive is how it plays like an episode of a TV show. If it wasn't obvious for the episode four nod on Yankee and the Brave, but also the outro scrolls like credits. Speaking of credits, let's just thank Jamie and Mike for this beauty, this masterpiece of an album. Again, me, personally, I'm not that well versed in the discography of RTJ like many of their hardcore fans, but this won me over. This is like my legacy entry point for them in my books. With all that being said, I'm feeling a 9 out of 10 on this record and I cannot recommend it enough. Now make sure you sound off down below in the comments to continue the conversation. Let me know what you guys think of this music, agree or disagree, I'm here to engage with you guys. If you'd like to leave a like, subscribe if you're new in town, I'd appreciate that very much. As always, thanks for watching and have a rockin' day.